Finish Photo 2.3 has a new spiral feature, a spiral tool. Really great new feature that if you haven't got, go to Affinity Photo there and check for updates. So check for updates. Now, if you still can't find it after you've upgraded to 2.3, what you can do, go to View and down to Customize Tools. Just go there and then select the spiral. You should find it there. So just select it and drag it into your tools. Now, here's my one. Now, normally it'd be with the various shapes like rectangle tool, etc. But you can position it anywhere. Now I've got a spiral there. And I can just apply it now. Now the default will be different from this. Now, unfortunately, there's no way of setting, as far as I can wear, setting it back. It'd be nice if there was a feature for that. But what you can do, you can change this, the arc angle in this case, so arc angle, and then it puts it basically back to the default spiral design. So that's why it's not possible to go through every single possible option that's available here, because there's literally hundreds of different combinations. This one's a linear, and you can go for decaying. This is probably the most powerful feature. You've got semicircular, you've got cat. Now, also, it remembers what it last was set to. So if you was using it earlier and you've got it set to a square one, if you want to set it to a circular, simply go here, use that one there. So just click there and that will change it backwards and forwards between a square light -like design or a circular design. Now I just want it as a circular here. So you can go here and Fibonacci and also plotted. And you've got a variety of different things. And they've all got different options as well. So you will notice that some like got bias. Now that doesn't appear with the others. So you can change it. So you want divisions here, you might change that. And you can see, you reduce it down, you end up with a sort of very unusual spiral design there. Or you can push it up so it becomes virtually a circular design. Also you've got another option here, inner radius. Now, if I go back to linear, Inner radius appears in, I think, all of them. Probably maybe not all of them, but certainly most of them. So you can change it in the radius. So you can just increase and decrease. So you end up with a spiral design like that. Also, again, you've got this arc angle. You can change that, get more or less nodes. Now, the only way of seeing those, of course, is go over here. So go to the node tool. And with node tool, you can then see all your, your nodes there. And of course, if I change this, the arc angle there, you can see it. And it just creates very interesting, which of course you can then manipulate further. I don't want that, just go back to the spiral. In the radius, let's just reduce that down. You've got a number of turns, so you can increase that, so you can obviously see you get, but it always fits to what you created in the first place. So you can see you've got this square box, obviously that I created, and then, of course, you can distort it. So just distort it. It's still live. So you can still modify it. So you can really stretch it and create all kinds of unusual spiral designs that way. And again, go to the spiral tool. Again, it's got that last one that's set in. The arc and I want it to be circular. It does seem to have a tendency to keep trying to set it back to that weird one. But you can see you can create some very interesting. And also, of course, you notice I'm changing it using the slider. You don't have to use the slider. You can always just go to the edit field and enter 23, or some other value, which you might find better than using the slider, which can also create discrete settings. Also, again, you've got inner radius. You can see as you do that, get that result. Also, you've got here clockwise, spiral clockwise, or anti-clockwise. Sometimes effective, depending on what you want to achieve. Again, go back to that one, and let's go for, say, counter semicircular. So counter semicircular, I think, creates a very intense design, you can see what happens. It goes that central part, and you can see as it goes out, all the way out from that, so it's connected to it. If you want for this one, semicircular, then it's not. I quite like that one, the counter semicircular. And again, you can click here to make it a circular design. Again, you can change the number of turns. So if, let's just push it down to say two. And now you've got this, 80. Well, you can set it to zero, so it's just two. Two turns. But what you can do, you can just change that. Again, you can enter the value if you want. But as you change it, you'll notice you get this additional line there, part of the line. And you can see you can do that just more and more and more. But again, it's still confined by that initial square. And again, you can still, of course, go to the move tool and resize it if you want to squeeze it in like that. And you can then continue to work with it still. 
And again, continue to change that, and it's still confined by that. So let's just get rid of that and go back to the start point. Again, it does have a tendency to go back to something that you might not want. So go back there. So that one, and you can see you've got turns. There's very few, obviously, settings for that. But you've also got plotted, and you've got this one, bias. So you can see as you change that, it crunches it up. Now, it would be nice, actually, if the other ones had the bias feature as well, which is odd. I think the linear one would be nice if you could crunch it up, but there isn't. So just change that, and you can see go the bias the other way, and you can see it crunches in the center. We'll go the other way again. We'll put it back to zero. Well, once you've got your spiral, what you can do, you can also change this. You just go over here, you can change the fill, so click there and just change that. But the trouble is, it creates this unusual line through it, which is not ideal. So personally, not going to do that. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to create a filled spiral. That would be really nice. That feature does not seem to be available. A workaround, if you've got designer, is of course you can put it into designer and then expand it and then bring it back into photo. That's a great way of just getting a field spiral if you want. But it would be nice if that feature was available in Affinity Photo. But also you've got options here, so you can click here. You can change the color, but you can also change it for dashes as well. So you can see, create a design like that. It's create some very unusual dash designs. And of course there's many options here to tweak and modify the settings here. And change that, change this, change the phase click that, and so on. There's literally hundreds of different designs just from that. Let's just put it back to that. Also, you can change the colour, so just, just change the colour to, say, green. Or maybe have a gradient, perfectly reasonable as well. Just go to the gradient tool and apply a gradient. Now, unfortunately, because the context is fill, it added a fill. If you want it to be added as a stroke, set the context for the gradient to be using that. So you can then create a nice gradient effect there. Go back to the Move tool, or again, go to the Spiral tool. You can also go here and go with the Layers, Layers panel, go to Effects down the bottom, click there, and then you can go down here and you can add an Outer Shadow. You can add all kinds of effects, so Radius, Offset, Intensity. Also, if you want, you can go for 3D to create a nice 3D effect for your Spiral design, and click Close, and you've got that design. Also, if you want, and you, once you're happy with your design, you can always go to Convert to Curves. So click there, and then it's converted into points that you or nodes you can manipulate with the node tool. So go there, node tool, and you can manipulate that design and just drag them out and modify the spiral in many different ways. Or maybe select multiple ones and drag those out to create some, again, very unusual designs. And of course, you can create multiple spirals and then combine those spiral designs in many different ways. Of course, you can also use filters. So you can go to filters and then use distort and deform. So you can just distort your design, just modify it and create some very weird and wonderful spiral designs. Click apply. If you want to keep it live, with that, you can go over to layer and down to new live filter layer, and maybe go for distort and maybe go for twirl or any of the others. Live twirl, you can change the angle and radius and distort the design and close it. It's live, so you can always come back at any point and modify that twirl. Once you've got your spiral and you think, yes, that spiral is great, exactly what I want, what you can do, you can save it. Now you can save it to your assets, go to window and assets, simply with that selected, you can then save it, go here and add from selection. So you can just quickly store it away for future use. But you can also save it as a preset. So you just go here. With that spiral tool selected, you've got along here, you've got this little cog there. Click there. And actually, weirdly, doesn't seem to come with anything. Just go there and create presets. So create presets. And you can give it a name. Spiral 1. And create. So now, you've got your spiral. At any point later, so you modify it. Let's go for something semicircular. You side... Oh, I don't want that one. I want the one I created earlier. Just simply click and it's turned back into that spiral design. With the spiral tool selected, hold down the control or command key on your keyboard and just click. 
and it will come up with this great spiral. It does it the same for all of the other shapes. And then you've got options exactly the same as before, decaying, semicircular, counter, and so on. And you can also modify counter, etc., as well as modify the number of turns. Simply hover over the turns and then just drag. And you can see create a very intense design or maybe less so. And also you can modify the width as well. So you might decide, I want it like that. In this case, it's linked. So you can just deselect that and then change the width. And then you can create, obviously, a narrow, etc. spiral. And click OK. You can also use the feature with the new additional feature in Affinity Photo. And I'm going to go through that in the next video. However, simply just press return and a move duplicate will appear. And now you can create all kinds of amazing transformations with multiple layers. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments below. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Thank you much.